So supposing that I want to, to test this particular result and I want to do a, a confirmatory factor analysis and then go on to test quickly the relationships between these variables using a structural equation modeling. So what am I going to do? Um, so I will quickly uh, copy the pattern matrix here and then head over to um, I will head over to Emos and go to my plugin, select Pattern Matrix Builder, and then I will select where I have saved the tutorial. Then you can see that I have 181 respondents of 181, so I do not have any missing uh, data here. I will select OK, then I will paste the results of my pattern matrix. Okay? Which is why it's good to use the path to go for um, principal as this factoring. So it makes it easier for you to quickly confirm um, the result. But I'd like to also tell you something here that when you want to do a factor analysis and then confirmatory factor analysis in one study, you do not use the same sample. Okay, the, the sample for exploratory factor analysis, for example, must be different from the value, uh, the, the sample that you're using for confirmatory factor analysis. But this is just the purpose of uh, demonstration tutorial. Okay, so I will click, and then you can see the factors have been. Uh, this is pretty looking good. Now I'm going to name this. Uh, we name this. Um, supports customer supports and then i will name this this is the next one uh, experience product experience then i can name this satisfaction this is my satisfaction then this is my value for money money okay then i can use the um, label to to explain this well this is um customer supports satisfaction customer support satisfaction and then i can reduce this to let's say 16. then i can level these products product experience then I will label this customer satisfaction customer satisfaction okay then I want to also label this value for money value for money okay then I'm going to save Emma's and say tutorial analysis okay so um, then I'm going to select this because I want it to look good so if you don't um, if you don't understand so I'm going to show you how you can also um, test this using another means just this is for people who have um, who can do a confirmatory factor analysis if you don't want to do a confirmatory factor analysis then you can maybe you want to go on straight to tests um, do a more linear regression analysis or multiple linear regression analysis i will go to outputs i want to see uh, the standardized regression and i want to see modification indices and so i will run the analysis Whoops. So having named the the variables, so I uh, will head over to run the confirmatory factor analysis. And to do that, I will head over here and then I've already checked this and then check this as well. And then and then I will click to run the analysis. And then the MS runs 
so you can see that um, uh, we check the results. Uh, I'm interested in checking this thing. That is coefficient. Now, there's something I want you to note. Let us get back to the previous um, threshold that we talked about. So if you had set your threshold, if you follow the previous video, the previous tutorial on factor analysis, then you will understand this. The absolute value greater than 0.5 as shown here, okay? Then, you, so you can see none of these, um, uh, none of these item statements here on each of these factors loaded below 0.5. So, so you can see that all of them here, in your confirmatory factor analysis, none will load below 0.5. But again, just like Fidel and colleagues suggested that 0.7 and above is excellent. In confirmatory factor analysis, we want to see those that loads above 0.7. Um, but in most cases, we can allow 0.6 if the statement means so well that we can't do without that. Okay? So, CS1. Now, let us look at CS1. The CS1 has the lowest uh, factor loading here of 0. 0. Um, 0. 0.68. You can see that 0. 0.68. While others, uh, CS2, that is item statement 2, 0. 0.7, item statement 3, have the highest 0. 0.93. Now, we might want to look at that before, assuming we want to knock it out, you need to first look at that. So you said, I am highly satisfied with my overall experience with the um, exercise kit. Okay. Now, one thing that we determine whether we want to knock out any item in a confirmatory factor analysis is that we need to go and check the view test. When you go to the view test, you want to see the measurement, the threshold, the model fit measures. If you meet the required threshold, then there is no need for you to knock out any of the item statements. So in this case, it does appear that we are meeting the threshold for confirmatory factor analysis. Look at that. The chi-square divided by degree of freedom is, is quite awesome. 1.921. Look at the, conf, uh, the comparative fit index. That is 0.939. The two color width index is 0 0.93 and then uh, incremental fit index is 0 0.94. So these are quite good. These are meeting the already threshold um, according to um, Hugh and Bentler. So I'm going to run the analysis now to also demonstrate that to you. Uh, RMSCA is also, well, this is supposed to be 0 0.06, but 0 0.07 is also acceptable. Uh, and the P close is, is pretty bad, probably because of the, um, the total number of the respondents. So I'm going to demonstrate this to, uh, for you. So I will check the validity and the reliability coefficients uh, measures. So you can see that the analysis tells us that we do not have um, any, um, any um, issue with, we do not have any issue with, um, uh, we do not have validity concern. So I'm going to put this here in our analysis results. Um, are we, are we, Paste this here so I can use this to uh, make explanations for you. So here is the validity and reliability um, measures that you may want to um, that you may want to put. This particular one I usually knock this out. I, I, I don't normally put this, so I'm, I'm gonna knock this out. So you can see this is uh, if you go down to the the analysis output, it says these are the thresholds from Hugh and Bentler, um, 1999. So you can actually copy this and put this into your work as valid. So you can see we do not have any validity concerns. Okay, and these are the correlation. These are the correlations among the variables. So the customer support. So this is like testing the bivariate correlation analysis. So this is the customer, the customer 
um, support satisfaction, the product experience, the customer satisfaction, which in this case is, is our dependent variable. And this is value for money, okay? Value for money. So you can see that all of them are actually correlating with each other. You can see that, that, that the customer support correlates with um, a value for money and correlates with customer satisfaction and even correlates with uh, product experience. And the values that are on diagonal are the discriminant validity values. So you need to show. So when you do your analysis and you report only the Cronbach's alpha reliability results, that is not enough. You also need to show us um, the, the Cronbach. This is the Cronbach's alpha uh, reliability. The Cronbach's reliability. Uh, let me just let me just put it this way. So this is where you now put out the results of the Cronbach's alpha reliability. Remember, we've uh, done that previously. Uh, let me let me show you for example. Um, no. Cronbach's alpha reliability. So let's say for this, I have the value 0 0.89. So I can come in here. Product is 0 0.89, and then I will. I will report the value of, um, uh, let's say I want to report the other value too, value for money. So, um, yep, so that shows 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0. So you can see um, this one is 0 0.91, this one is 0 0.88, 0 0.8. 8, 9, almost similar with um, uh, with the Cronbach's alpha. This one has just almost similar with the Cronbach's alpha reliability coefficients. All right. Now the next part is to check the model fit for confirmatory factor analysis because that's what we want to see before you can go on to test your analysis, the um, um, hypothesis that, that you want to test. Now this is uh, and we said no. So it produces the result of the model fits. Okay, so even though that we have issues with the model, uh, we have an issue here because, and I will tell you why we are having this issue. Um, so under this analysis, So in this analysis, you can see that chi-square value, if you divide this value by the degree of freedom, you're going to get this, okay? Uh, let me take you to the view test so you can see the results once more. So you can see uh, that is this value here, okay? So, and, and then the, the comparative fit index, the same thing, zero point, so this is 0 0.94 if you approximate, but it could have been better if it's above this. And um, this is uh, 96. This is excellent. And this is acceptable. T close is terrible. Okay. And it is terrible because um, you can see that the value here is saying you can improve the model fit better if you remove this. V that is value for money item statement number four if you go down to um, this point even if you want to consider knocking any item item out you need to check that the item statement value for money the fourth I, I feel the SSI kit offers exceptional value for money standing out among similar products in the market so I think the item statements are quite good so there is basically no need for me to um, knock any of them out so I would want to retain that normally because I've already met the threshold. Okay, I've already met the um, the measurement met, met a measurement fit model. So there's no need. So here I can add I can add the TLI to Kolewicz index and then also which has zero point. Um, I can go on here. The TLI is zero point nine three. 0 0.93 0 0.93 is, is, is also same with this threshold and then I can also add the IFI if I want incremental the IFI incremental fitting desk which is same with 0 
and then has the same uh, trade hood and then uh, well that's also acceptable so we have an acceptable measurement fee so you need to report this 